today on How To's and Reviews with Booze. We'll be showing you how to change the oil in your automobile so that you too can do it yourself. So this is a third gen 98 Forerunner that we're going to be changing the oil on today. And to do this, you're only going to need a couple of things. The first is the oil filter. The second is the recommended amount of oil. And you can see in your owner's manual exactly how much and what type of oil to use. For this particular engine, they call for the 5W30. And when you're replacing it with the filter for my engine, which is the 5VZ FE, I would need 5.5 quarts. So we're more than good to go there. You're also gonna need a socket set, socket wrench, something to catch the oil in, and a funnel to replace the oil once you're done. As always, we're gonna be pairing this how to with a little bit of booze. And today, I've selected Sweet Baby Java. Sweet Baby Java is sort of the brother to uh, another beer that DeClaw makes called Sweet Baby Jesus, which is a chocolate peanut butter porter. Uh, this is basically sort of the same idea, but it has espresso bean infused into it. The reason why I picked this one today, uh, for two reasons, I'm doing this in the morning and I feel like if I have espresso in my beer, it sort of justifies doing it. And also, I feel like my old oil is going to be just about as dark as this. And that was a terrible, terrible pour. As I mentioned, Sweet Baby Java is made by the DeClaw Brewing Company. They're based out of Baltimore, Maryland, and they describe this beer as a GABF, I think that's Great American Beer Festival, metal winning robust chocolate peanut butter porter infused with whole bean espresso to add new depth and complexity to our sweet baby. Pop the top, take a sip, and you'll wonder where has this been all my life. And that is exactly what we're going to do today. All right, so you can definitely taste the espresso a little bit. Um, the peanut butter really comes through. Really good beer, especially if you like Sweet Baby Jesus. I definitely recommend it. But before we drink too much of this, let's get into the how-to. Now for this particular car, the first thing that we're gonna have to do is remove the skid plate from underneath. There's only a couple of bolts that hold this on. So you got one, two, three. Four is up in there. Five is right there. Six. And seven for the rear skid plate. There's actually two other bolts that I forgot to tell you about. One up in this hole and the other one up in that one. You're gonna need an extender on your socket wrench like that in order to get it. Most cars will not have the skid plate for you to worry about, so you'll be able to just go uh, right into taking off the cap on the crankcase, which we'll get to in a little bit. And this little bolt right here is what we've been going for. This is the oil pan itself, and this is the drain where the oil is gonna drip out into the pan. But first, you're gonna to wanna to locate the crankcase cap or the oil cap on the engine, and you're gonna to wanna to take this off. The reason being is that when you remove the drain plug, the oil is gonna flow out of the engine a lot more freely. Also not a bad idea to take the car for a little drive before you do this. That way the oil will warm up and uh, again, it'll just flow out a lot more easily. Now that the drain pan is in place and the oil cap is off on the engine, we can start with taking out the drain plug. Once you feel it's at the end of the threads, get ready to move your hand pretty quickly. I can already feel the hot oil starting to come out on my uh, finger here, so just get ready to move your hand fast and let it drain. As that's draining, you're gonna to wanna to remove the oil filter. Now, on this car, the oil filter is actually under the alternator there, and it's a real pain to get out by going in through the engine bay 
And what I found is actually the best thing to do is turn your wheel off to the, uh, to the left and you can actually go right in the side here. And it's kind of hard to see, but that right there is your oil filter. Here's a little better shot with some light. So when you pull this back, you can see the oil filter is right there. And you can just kind of squeeze your hand right in through that harness and twist it off. Again, it's a little bit, uh, a little bit uncomfortable, but if you get your hand in there the right way, it's actually pretty easy to get off. Now, if you're having trouble getting the oil filter off, you can use one of these. This is actually an oil filter wrench tool. So oil filters on the car, you basically just slip that right around. And when you push on this handle, you can see you get enough leverage to then twist it off. Next, we can replace the drain plug. And don't forget to replace the crush washer, which is that washer right there, like I didn't. Now you definitely don't want to over tighten this bolt. Not a lot of owner's manuals will give you a torque specification for how tight this uh, bolt needs to be. If you have a factory service manual, uh, nine times out of 10, they'll definitely tell you, unless you have a Haynes or a Chilton or something like that. Um, but usually I just get it you know, nice and tight there and then call it good enough. Next, we're gonna put the filter back on. Now you can see the O-ring at the top there, the glistening in the light is actually a little bit of grease that they put on um, to make the gasket last a little bit longer. What I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of oil in the filter so that when the engine starts up, um, there's not as much fluid that needs to run through there before it goes through the rest of the system. And then I just take a little bit and run it right around the top and the ring just to give it another little lubrication. If you spill any on the side, just wipe it up and install on your car. And right there you can see the new oil filters on. Just get it nice and nice and hand tight there, and that definitely has worked. I've never had any leaks come out when you uh, you know really give it a good squeeze and uh, get it all nice and tight. Now just grab a funnel, pop it in the crankcase, and refill with however much your manufacturer recommends. So that was a little under five and a half uh, quarts right there. What I'm gonna do is put the cap back on, take it for a little ride after I get the skid plates back on. And then once I come back and let the car cool down, um, I'm gonna check the level of the oil and top up if I need to. Now I've got the skid plates on. I've taken it for a little drive for about 15 minutes and then I've let it sit for about another 15 minutes so that it can cool down a little bit and let all the oil drain down into the oil pan so that when we check the levels, we get an accurate reading. But first, I'm just gonna come up here with a little rag right around the drain bolt and just make sure it's nice and dry. Make sure you don't have any leaks. Obviously, you have like a little bit of, uh, of dry stuff right there, but there's you know no leaks coming out of it, no fresh oil. So we're good to go and good to check on the fluid levels at this point. On this particular 4Runner, the dipstick for the engine oil is on the driver's side of the vehicle. You can actually see it's right down here in front of the alternator. And what you're gonna do is basically just take this thing out and you're gonna be looking for a reading in between these two marks. This is gonna be your full mark and that's gonna be your low mark. Now you might see a little bit of streaking from oil in here, but really what you're looking for is a consistent amount of oil on the side. So just dip the dipstick in, pull it back out, take a look at the oil, and you can see right now this is ending right about there. There's like a little bit that runs up on the side, but that looks to be the reading. We'll do it once more.
And again, you can see it's just a little bit, a little bit uh, under the full mark there. Now what I'm gonna do, instead of adding more oil at this point, um, I'm gonna run the car a little bit more throughout the day. I'm gonna do another reading at nighttime just to make sure that it's accurate. Um, and then I might top up a little bit, but you know, the amount that's in there is perfectly acceptable. Once you've checked all the levels a few times and you've turned it on, turned it off, and really made sure that the levels are accurate for what the readings are, all you have to do is take your old oil, throw it back into the jug that you got it from, take it to your local auto parts or Pep Boys or any one of those stores, and usually they're going to recycle it for free for you. And that's it, guys. Now you can go back to enjoying your sweet baby Java at 10 in the morning like a total degenerate. Post any questions or comments below. Hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And check out any of my other videos on how-tos and reviews with booze.